Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tier Nova Last of Zavira, which we're playing with a sub mod of the Community Expansion. I'm your host, Mr. West Zavira, in Thief Territory, level, but an unexpected investment. Alexander stared at the two mooks sitting at his family table, his wife and children standing to the side, their looks teetering on mute terror. Ah, the owner's here, come on in! The thinner bandit grinned and waved Alexander forward to the table, while his exterior did seem friendly. The shop owner did not take his eyes off the rifle on the bandit's knees. Alexander sat down, interlocked his fingers, controlled the shaking that entered his hands. Good evening, how may I help you? When you hear that your business is struggling, Mr. Korovi. The teller bandit sat forward, observing the shopkeeper with a sashering grin. Well, Alexander was about to burst into hopeless tears, they were right, completely right. He didn't even have enough money to get drivers to the good trucks, or the goods trucks, and had to drive them himself, but how could he tell that to the men who took gold and handed out lead at a moment's notice? The shopkeeper sat, collecting all of his courage, lying was pointless, and he wanted to make sure that whatever happens, he would not be remembered for cowardice. Yes, I'm struggling. What's well, perfect? Congratulations, Mr. Koroviv. Our local administration has heard these rumors and decided to help. Alexander was stunned. P pardon? You should be receiving payouts starting next month to keep your business running. Though there's a condition, the teller bandit sat forward. Alexander nodded anxiously, that being the thin chief or thin thief chuckled. We order you follow as simple as. But, uh, let's see. We got a couple comments to go through, and of course, we're still finishing up the Army of Thieves. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Um, disband the militias would not be a bad idea. Oh, that's weird. Uh, 1.56. Units of West Siberian Infantry Equipment is added to its national stockpile. Only that much. Aid for military. Bog top. Actually, where do we have for military? Uh, you know, military professionals. It's uh, it's going. It's human Academy. Daily command power. Plus 10% more attack and defense. That's not bad. Actually, a lot of this is actually really good. You actually get more growth from this one too. Industrial expertise would. Huh. We could actually use that. Well, modernize the forces. The academy. Um, political power. So, I did check out the last time I did this. I went all left. So, we're going to go with the right. Found criminal corporations. Which, huh. Distribute mining contracts, but we're going to go with all Russian oil consortiums. Heal every resource. Stability. These It takes actually quite a while to get anything. Do we get any growth at all? Because I went with full left last time. Full left. I, I did nothing but left. This time we're going to go to the right. If we lose a growth, it probably gets better. That's not bad. Um, a village in every school. Rapidly improve academic base and research facilities. An education for crime. Lose research speed, but get more encryption and decryption. Knowledge isn't free. Um, urbanize our holdings. Let the money flow. It takes a while to get down here, actually. That's kind of interesting to see. Hmm. I kind of want to go down this way instead, but we'll start with the final criminal corporations. Let's face it, they all monitor the bigger the better, it's almost always true. When it comes to business and profits, doubly so. We can only make so much money extorting mom and pop shops and stealing from people who are already going hungry from lack of money. It's time to move on from mere criminal rackets. By centralizing our operations and creating large conglomerates, we exert a great deal of control over our holdings and most importantly ensure rapid and highly lucrative economic growth and development soon. Our slice of Russia will be out while sharing the rest, assessing our potential. Bahatov marched in front of the Royal Soldiers, observing the new arm form of armed forces he would command. Some stood straight. He could recognize the deportment of his own officers or the force of Kakanovich's. So others, like Omskovites, didn't even seem to breathe. There was a <clears throat> more relaxed ones, the Raganov's boys, the lost ones, or of course the bandits. Not having uniforms, many exchanged jokes as Bahatov passed them. The general turned on his heels, observing the line of mix and match soldiers. Korotov through Kalmykin, redo basic training. The line of bandits went silent, shocked. All the bandit forces started to redo basic training, including discipline training and uniform rules. The general looked at the rest and shouted, To the right. The line turned 90 degrees, even the shocked bandits following <clears throat> orders. A forward march. The soldiers marched away towards the barracks, leaving Izzyliani, who now sat up lazily on the silence, observing the general and of alone in the field. Izzyliani broke the silence. What the heck was that? I, I thought we were working together, you dustbag. It's not, uh, pfft, about that was not all shifted by the sh changing tone. The territorial resources were not ready to, for combat. They like discipline and they cannot follow, follow orders efficiently, as that is the base of the army. Look, old boy, Zuliani sat forward. It was clear he barely continued his anger. Each gang has the right to express their way in the combat. You don't. Batov chuckled. Well, they keep trying to undermine overall order. It won't get. Won't matter how unique they are. They're dead in a ditch. When the sun goes down, we're all like everyone else. So we exert influence, which is nice, and all paths grow thorns. Ah, race for the girls. Um, I've heard this one before, yeah. A new theater, if you know about this, please go ahead. Usayam pays in his office, easy to write out the list. Two food trucks, several tons of small arms ammo, a seized ammo depot. Enough of the cart stepped in his tracks, turning on his heel, staring down his right hand man. Well, he looked at his tie nervously, blinking a couple of times. Well, what, sir? What did that offer respond to our demands? Usayam rounded his desk. 
sitting down and interlocking his fingers. When will this stop? Well, uh, Yilo opened up the crumpled note clip to the notebook, clearing his throat. I quote, Let the boys have some fun and a few missing bolts is no harm done. Madness, utter madness, occurred and interrupted his assistant again. Measure the room with the steps. That's not a lack of discipline. Who does that brute take me for? Yilo waited for a pause in the tirade. You're certainly correct. The destruction of assets in such a massive way is unlikely to be. I know, Yilo, I know. No need to repeat my thoughts. This is the unrobbed simples. This must end. Put all drivers on a smuggling route. It's off the main roads. No more emergency aid. I want you to crush his suck up skulls. Starve him of everything. The export will make up for it. The animal will be paying his debts threefold. I think we've done before. We're going to prepare an invasion, but. Um, how do we actually do this? This is different than before. Nothing can be left to change. We'll launch an invasion of all remaining Ural states. Activate a mission that will last for 90 days. Upon completion, we launch our invasion. How do you get more influence? Let's see. Southern Ural is a region that, thanks to its isolation, has escaped the efforts of various unifying forces to unite the Russian state. This, however, is not a state of affairs that can last if the Russians will be truly restored. Gaining influence with the Ural warlords and preventing from establishing a sphere of influence in the region is necessary in order to finally integrate the region and secure a hold over yet more of the motherland. The influence we have over the Ural state will be dependent largely on our initial receptiveness to us, or their receptiveness. However, we may be able to win over the lesser receptive states with a period of investment in the economy and diplomatic papers. We will not be alone in trying to establish our sphere of influence in the area, however. Should our opponent prove too influential in the region or to overcome, our only option may be to resort to an invasion. Ah, excuse me. Just slipping a little bit of uh, tea here. a lot of Ural states. So we have the Ural, oh, Ural League, Ural League, Orenburg, yeah. I'm thinking we probably could take them out. How strong are these guys? Hmm, maybe. We only have 10 divisions, but we can make them really, really thick if we really need to really quickly. Our status is 0%. This is very weird. You can't do anything about this. And the vestiges of Bolshevism. The Bolshevik Revolution was by far the greatest tragedy to befall the Russian people. Though the Tsar was a reactionary fool who hobbled Russia and sent countless thousands to die in his useless wars, the Bolsheviks inflicted countless terrors upon their, his, their own people and lost so much of our nation to the Germans, who even we despise as barbarians, they destroyed our beloved homes. Most importantly, they denied the Russian the right to profit, the one motivation that always ensure victory. We, on the other hand, understand business. We understand money. We are the ones in power, not the Bolshevik scum. Are we doing anything else here down here? I wanted to wait for. Advanced developmental subsidies. Our industrial equipment societal development will begin to slowly improve. We get uh, quite a few things here. Oh, can we actually do exploit uranium deposits? Yeah, we can. Uh, that's different. Usually we can't do that. And this one's for 1969, so... We still have three years left, so I'm not super concerned about it, so... we have to wait for these guys to finish first, maybe? I don't know. The All-Russian Oil Consortium. Perhaps the most valuable resource available to us to exploit our current situations in other than oil, and then someone call it black gold. We received many reports from our best scientific minds that we may have only scratch the surface with the rich oil reserves of Siberia. With the proper funding, and most importantly, the proper management, we can pull our know-how and capital together and create a massive oil company that will pump up a profit like a big river of money. So that's all stuff is done. 1966. Let's go some of this, too. Oh, look at that. We actually made a couple more divisions, too. Now they're not good at all, but whatever. You get a read of these guys, we do it like this. Better disappointment. Harab took a step back. Uh, several of the crowd tried to approach the podium screaming angrily. Wait, whatever is the I had mentioned in the speech did not seem to calm the crowd and said it only got worse. So I think it I think it's better uh, leaning out of the way and trying to uh, the flying rocks, so let's go. Uh, maybe the speeches were all the same, but this time it didn't seem to work. Maybe next time. Seal every resource. Coal, iron, aluminum, gold, precious metals, oil. A dream like some babushka's shopping list, except we're the ones doing the selling, and we're really getting effing rich from it, too, already. Opportunistic businessmen from within our borders and the lands from beyond even Russia have sought to buy all that we have to offer from our mines and oil fields. And are more than happy to oblige them. So long as we keep the mines running, the direct pumping, we'll have a non-stop flow of and profit, but why should we settle here? We need a prospect for more resources. We'll need to dig big, bigger and deeper and open more mines. Unemployment will be a thing of the past for those that accept the rule of thieves. The natural wealth of Western Siberia is ours to steal, and perhaps much soon, much more soon. Hmm. 
Well, the relations like they like us. Yeah, is this bu this has got to be bugged? So must be more than zero percent receptive. I may use cons commands if Beats is not already investing. Um, I just want to get it started, so I may use cons commands to see what we can do about this. That's good. The next step. An early economic venture has so far been a resounding success. Under the wise leadership of the Great Pecan, the thieves have turned this war to land, waste land into a land of opportunity. Are the people forgetting those idealistic promises from the Bolshevik false saviors and the vitriol arcade of Yazov's gang? There are only those that we exploit, uh, and those that we offer the opportunity for exploitation. But what now? We can't possibly stop here. We have the foundations for a free market built and the resources to do it, but we have to spend our own capital somehow. The answer is, of course, relies on Russia's two greatest strengths agriculture and industry. We should invest in light and heavy industry alike from the shoe factories to plant tap tank plants, and take a delicious slice of profits. As for the farm dotting the countryside, the old collectivization policies that will be reversed, or is revised in something that is more profitable to our needs. Let's get back to working and we can pump in even more profits than we'd ever imagined or thought possible. Hmm. 1.5% growth. We could race for that one. Yeah, I like the 1%. Uh -huh. Getting your hands dirty, probably. Russia is a nation of peasants. The urbanization has been a trend since the late 19th century. The largest of Russian cities like Moscow and Petrograd have long largely in the hands of the German dudes, whom we cannot do anything about yet. However, we can focus on doing that horrific Bolshevik program of collectivization, which punished farmers just for being enterprising and successful with their jobs, with countless millions carted away to the gulags as kulak capitalists, while the rest were treated as cattle by the state. We shall last no longer. The farms, too, must be opened up to the market, and the rug plague shall infect the fields no longer. Some comments included, Can someone explain to you know to me? Every time I look into it, it just looks like pure anarchy. So basically, the lore is World War II ended in a German victory and a, a Japanese uh, back victory. The USSR collapsed, and Hawaii got nuked by Imperial Japan. Someone says, "In Tiano, can I do Ibuka's reconciliation ending?" Well, we'll see. Someone says, "Isiliani is better than Octan 2.0," but okay. Someone says, "I should have gone with Isiliani." So someone says, "Zelensky, no." The thieves world. Isiliani tapped the pen on the paper, lifting his eyes of the mayor to the town. Is that all? The young man nodded, scratching his cheek, a prison tattoo on the top of his hand, showing a smoking skull. Certainly is. The people need some education, not enough engineers for the electrical substation. Also, the food reserves could get a refill with what the collective farms being an utter effing bust. The grip of Khan said, yeah, yeah, stop yapping, I'm thinking. It certainly was a point in problem. But the people were not only split by their identities, but even by how they got their daily piece of bread. Omskabat and Gaganovich's clique worked by what was essentially a command economy. Zatow stood on the sheer capitalist economy, though it was social and was barely existent. Rokozovsky was a military junta and worked completely by rationing. In the end, an army by itself was not very effective. But they were going to be their economy? Is Leon is certainly remember the greatest mafia officers of his time. Al Capone, Siegel, Dillinger, all of them had tied the system around their finger, and which system was it? Is Leon felt a grin spread across his lips? I think we should profitize. I mean, it worked for the Americans. Nice. Do we get a uh, boost in nothing? Okay. Get a boost in nothing. Price controls. Life in Russia is hard for almost everybody. Peasants, workers, farmers, ma merchants, you name it. They're probably broken hungry. But why should we go out of our way to be their charity? We're the thieves, darn it's the name. If we want to keep the people from striving to death, perhaps we should make food more affordable so they have more money to give to us in taxes. We'll see you on his proposal. We instituted a program of price controls and rationing to ensure everyone has their fill and can work hard for a new capitalist class. All it takes is a single stroke of a pen and we can make it all just starvation, just a fading memory for those that accept our wise policies. Become more centralized. We lose a lot of growth, but we reduce inflation. At least that's good. Let's see. Yeah. We're gonna do that one because I like we get more stability that way and it just makes more sense to do so. Also, I did use cons commands, so now we have more influence and our growth is okay. It's not great, but it's okay. Getting your hands in the dirt, huh? Happy November. Must be more than zero percent receptive. Are you kidding me? Cause 50 influence. We can only have 29. So we'll get there eventually. Consolidate smaller farms. Collectivization was a horrific, horrific crime that saw family farms combined by the state. Successful peasants carted off to the camps and the rest forced to be nothing more than farmhands on their own land. However, collectivization came with one advantage, and that was the smallest farms that were inefficient subsistence plots became part of a larger and more powerful whole. With Bolshevik and Commons, a thing of the past, the guidance of the thieves will see smaller farms absorbing the larger estates under the control of those who are mostly loyal to us. Not bad. I'm just kind of waiting for it down here. It's kind of cool. We actually get uranium. Why don't we ship that? Hey, we're, we're supposed to be nice. We got more divisions too. Good. Nice. 
having four research slots is uh, it's pretty strong as a regional you know, power. Of deployment. Ah, your taxes for development. There are only two things that are certain in this world. Death and taxes. Russia's already had a lot of death in those past decades, and let's face it, what people really want now is just the assurance that today won't be their last day on Earth. As for us, we want, what we want is more profits and bigger budgets so we can keep expanding our ventures, legal or otherwise. So the people don't want death, perhaps we can have a win-win deal and settle for some good old taxing every cent they have in exchange for the continued safety and security. Some might call it racketeering or extortion, but we in the Bratva are fine with just good business. We even the stability's not getting higher. We've got a lot of negative policies here, but whatever. It is what it is. I might just do some of this anyways, because we can. Populated radical ideologies uh, radical ideologies would increase. It's going to be bad for weekly manpower. You know what? Screw it. Why not? You know what? Screw it. We'll do both. Because we can afford to right now. Brew relations. Oh, we're getting close. We're getting very close. What's in a name? Be it to scratch his beard, the dirt covered rubber gloves is always disappearing into his own thoughts as he tended to his field. <clears throat> but why the name the thieves? He really couldn't put a finger on it. Sure, their language is generally dirty. Their tower was terrible and they carried guns wherever they went and used them with little to no control, but who didn't? F Pieter, in fact, saw less that, not more than when Kaganovich was still the man with the crown. And working wasn't as unpleasant, after all. Your own fields feel much better than a community one. And who was he started? Who was he to start lying to himself? Yeah, they could collect a tax, but at least they had the conscience to send some foul mouthed gang pup to explain it first, rather than barging in and taking whatever they wanted. On the weekends, Pieter had not a weekend since. Well, he couldn't even remember the when. Sure, he got longer breaks on Sundays, but otherwise there was little labor for the people in the party day in and day out. And the sales. He'd never bought or sold anything before, sure. He bartered by knowing that you could trade for a day's food and some new books with the paper stacks you got from a ton of potatoes some up out more reassuring than hoping that the Narcom was in good spirits on one day or another. Why, the fact he even thought about books was a surprising. A couple of years back, and he would just stare at those hieroglyphs glyphs without a thought in the world. No, maybe they called themselves thieves, Peter concluded, but he sure didn't see it. Keeping our minds bright. Knowledge is power, and power is something that the Great Pecan is always hungry for. A German invasion threw our country into anarchy, and who suffered most of all? The little boys and girls who should have been growing up in school were now forced to beg on the streets just to survive and left at the mercy of petty warlords, sure. Uh, we might be warlords too, but we're warlords with principles. That's more important. If the little ones are growing up illiterate and dumb, Russia will suffer compared to her international competition. And if we ever desire to become a real world superpower, the next generation of Russians are going to have to be the best and brightest around. Absolutely. Even better. Not bad. We have 19 divisions too now. Even though they're not very good at all. Hey, there you go. Nice. So, can we do anything now? Oh, it's lagging, so we'll see. Happy November, everybody. So we can't do anything here, which is, I think is more than 0% receptive. Just try to add a sphere. Is it weird we can't do anything? Because I'd like to do all this stuff, but we just can't. Clerical errors. What exactly do these papers mean? The Great Pecan shuffled for his reading glasses and looking visibly confused at what exactly the sheet of graphs and numbers laying on his desk meant. Xiaobin, just last week, two million rubles had disappeared from the accounts associated with you and your, our loyalists across the territory. Though we haven't been able to trace who's receiving the money, we can only assume that that's the reason behind our informants within the Usuyan Circle, warning of his increased arm purchases as of late. I need every hand we can get on finding who's getting the darn money, Roth. Now, they're planning something bigger than just knowing, and we don't flush them out like Curtis Jews and Bratz. Now, it's not just going to have my head up, but yours. Do you even give a darn, Raphael? Sweat rolled down from the Great Pecan's face as Java Silver gave out. Of course, Java, I care. You think Aslan will have me in the gutter if he takes you up? But please listen. When you get like this, we can't get anything done. Nodding his head and understanding. Java at last calmed down a bit to get his papers. One thing in particular cut his eye in particular. Some ex collective farms and the two men in Oblast were given to suppose and Supposed compliant figures. It received a strange high influx of funding for private agriculture development. It could have been a coincidence then that the owners of these farms had alleged ties to a certain Aslan Usuyam. Rob, look here. A couple of well placed bribes here and there could uncover the whole nest of snakes. This guy here, Pavel Mikhailovich. Uh, <clears throat> the pecan took a pause to emphasize. Might need some convincing. I trust that you'll get the right people on the job, and these friends of the Kurdish son of a gun will be soon be a dog food. As God willing, soon he will be too. Job will look Raphael straight in the eyes as he left the room. And only one thing left to say don't disappoint me, Raf. An education for crime. Education is good and all, but street smarts are a lot more important than book smarts. What use is the bright mind if you have no clue how to fight and struggle will make yourself known? The thieves uh, rely on bright young criminals that are ready to beat up and kill at a moment's notice and run a business the next. Kids ought to be taught on how to survive in the real world and instill a proper enterprising spirit in the young minds rather than whatever Bolshevik BS they were getting stuffed in their brains before. Cool. German sabotage. Oh god, what the heck? 
The Germans have sabotaged our infrastructure. Last late last night, they informed the local garrison about a revolt by the railway workers, a problem that was later revealed to be a sham concocted to distract the garrison. While our troops were away, the Germans planned on dynamiting a few of our railways. No one noticed them, and they got away successfully. We're so reeling from the intermediate impact of the effects, but hopefully their infrastructure will be repaired soon. We'll be more careful next time. What the heck? How does that happen? What? I think the Germans have much more important things to do than mess with us, but I could be wrong, I guess. Holy crap, what the heck? Knowledge isn't free. As it turns out, running a state-of-the-art education system isn't going to be cheap. We're not doing this without some benevolence for the masses. We're doing it because it's necessary for any functioning state to have proper education. Unfortunately, it's also putting us in the red. Many nations charge money, quite a few large amounts of money, for students who attend privately run universities, especially when said universities are among the elite schools within their systems. As some rich parents uh, want to bribe their kids into the university, who are we to say no? We'll just wrap up those ne totally necessary exorbitant admissions prices and keep the bribes coming. As for those who can't afford it too bad, maybe they can become criminals instead and leave those rich nerds to their own machinations. All data research facilities with modern research facilities. Wow. You know, it's a perfect time to get that one. Hey! Credit rating improved. Nice. That's good. Hey, we're up here. Not bad. Cool. Urban Hazard Holdings, Washington, Tokyo, Germania, Rome. When people think of the great powers of the world, the first thing that comes to mind is the sprawling centers of political and economic power they possess. A proper power ought to have great cities, teeming with commerce and culture, a testament to the strength of their people and leadership. The Thief Territory had a few large cities, but they are dwarfed by those of the other nations of both population and financial power. We'll encourage investment in settlements in our industrial cities like Tumen and Surgut through incentives like reduced taxes and offers of stimulus packages to prospective capitalists. Furthermore, we'll start to build new factories in mining towns so urban settlements can start to grow more naturally within our lands without constant government intervention. Perhaps we'll even get a few brave tourists. Ooh, not bad. Low marks again. Sorry, uh, Maria Stepanova. Real sorry. The young man dragged uh, Dimitri through the doorway on the single room apartment, past the stone faced Maria. The middle aged woman, not even having time to take her apron off. They jumped us, and I wasn't sure if. Don't worry, Vasya, just go on. Your mother's also worried about the sick. <clears throat> um. The woman pronounced evenly, helping Dimitri sit down, the 17-year-old grinning uncharacteristically for his age as if he was an old man and everything hurt. Vasya would not would not nervously looking back at Dimitri. Heck, I guess I'll see you tomorrow, Mikita. Uh, gotta go, huh? He would slip out of the apartment as quickly as possible, leaving his comrade alone. Uh, Maria would help unclip the young man's shirt, finding the assuming kid in the back of the kitchen and then finding the knife injury on his stomach. Lord, blood in a hole, you really made a mess of the shirt. My tanka. Her stone cold tone, which warmed slightly, but her voice began to shake. Dimitri grunted something acknowledging that his cap having slid down to his eyes, he pulled his weight against the table, being, hit, being hard to even sit down. Beginning to sew around the wound, wound shut, Maria Stepanova would look at the rest of the scars that littered her son's chest and arms, the same ones she also had to close. Lord Mitya, this cannot continue. Mm -hmm. The other responded weakly. Do you not even think? Do you think that bearing on man and the family is not enough? Want to make me have to bury my son as well? No, ma. Lord, I don't even know what to do with you anymore. You wander around with those boys and make a mess. Why can you not be like your sister? Do you want to bring me to an early grave, Mitya? No, Ma, no. All you know is fight and fight and fight. And all we have to do is clean up and bear it. When we grow up, Mario would throw the sewing kit down, have him soon as one wound shut and sit down, putting his face in her hands. Dimitri opened his mouth, only one weak excuse flowing out. Sorry, Ma. I stayed against the state. Mario looked at her son entering the apartment, instantly noticing his scuff uniform. Oh, this double, this came out twice. The young boy, uh, Vachenko, what happened, hmm? The young boy looked down his shoes before muttering a fight. Murray shook her hand on his side, come, da come sit down. The boy would drop a school bag and sit down at the dinner table and still not looking up from his knees. The young woman would sit down across from him. You know you can't keep going like this, right, Vachenko? The boy would not respond. Every week you come back like this, all dirty and beaten. You have to start growing up. You cannot uh, solve your problems with your fists, son. It was all Zenka's fault, the boy would shout, raising his eyes, clearly about to burst into angry tears. You promised that we wouldn't give each other out. Just because I saw some chalk, you gave me out like a dirty rat. Maria sighed, keeping her voice as even as possible. Well, Vanya, this is still not... Then that's why Dad's allowed to, and I'm not. I hear boys are supposed to look out for each other. The other one barely contained the surprise. Well, the boy would sob and run out of the room, knocking over the chair, slamming the door behind him. Vanya Maria would follow, try to follow, but then sat back down, sighing again, rubbing her forehead. She didn't know why her husband, I suppose, Vor V. Zakon, one who was never supposed to work with the government, suddenly became the chief of local police. Or well, he permitted himself to marry, even though Vor was supposedly, supposedly never married. 
She's going to wrap her head around it either, just as her son. Vores, promises, honor. God is so no, no more mature than Vanya. So research facilities, huh? Clearing the ranks. Extract from, uh, oh, it is before. Who's good? Hey, do you want to read this? Another one bites of dust. Urbanize, 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 urbanize. Happy March, everybody. Knowledge ain't free, my boys and girls. There you go. Let the money flow. Uh, well, who, well, who would have thought? When you let such fine businessmen such as ourselves run an entire country, we might be able to turn a ruble or two in profit. Our banks are flowing with so much gold and cash, we can't even figure out what to do with it. Our economy is being constantly reinvested in with all the income we're making from local development taxes and the foreign contracts with the corporations from Philadelphia to Tokyo. Our farms are running so efficiently that you forget we're right smack in uh, Siberia, and those cursed breadlines are a thing of the past, at least for those that accept who's on top. As for us, can things even get better from here? Our associates are building factory after factory, the once unemployed masses turning out everything from shirts to cars to jet fighters for, their own, own, for our own use and for opportunities to entrepreneurs. What do they do with all those weapons they're selling? That's none of our business, so long as they keep paying us what we do. Profit has become the word of the day, and even minor pecans are swimming in that sweet, sweet cash. So long as we keep growing our ventures, the party will never end. Here's a toast to my many more profitable ventures to come. Why not? As well as need to modernize the forces, too. There we go. What do we have up here? Nice. And there are 33. Uh, what do we have over here? Better trucks? Yes, we need better helicopters eventually too, but modernized forces. Through discipline, though discipline and training remain a serious issue for our forces, it don't matter little how good our individual warriors are trained if they do not have the arms and leadership to make them into real soldiers. Uh, though in theory, our men should be armed with Kalashnikov rifles, protected by T-55 tanks and BTR troop carriers. And have the skies above watched by jet fighters, the truth paints a much less flattering picture. Many of our echelon units still use mosin and rifles from the war, and many still lack ammo from even those if they are lucky enough to have a weapon. Our armored units and airports are, to put it mildly, non-existent. We cannot expect to win a war if, we are, if the sorry state of affairs continues any longer. That's very true. Oh, wow. Samara actually beat them. Good job, Samara. Wow. Proof house attack helicopters. Sure, why not? A team in military academy, probably. Or this week, this one, too. Where, where, where are we at for military professionalism right now? Um, six. You know what? We're going to go this one next. General Batov was once an enemy to us, a leading commander of the Third Army to our south, and while they reportedly the Marshal Rokosovsky's successor, though Sverdlovsk ultimately fell in our hands, Batov's forces were some of the few that didn't accept their bribes and fought to the better end. Since then, he's proven invaluable in organizing a new army. Though he has little love for the thieves of Batov, which is a sub Russia, then we'll give him everything he needs to, to that end. Way more military. Oh, a lot more stuff here. Nice. I love it. More military professionalism? What's not a love? We love professionals. Air parity, huh? Air supremacy. Um, we could try this one. Uh, we probably won't get them in the end, but whatever. See on the skies. Da -da -da. The team in Military Academy. No army can fight and expect to win unless it's a properly led. Although we are already putting effort into the training of our soldiers into a proper fighting force, they will be nothing but cannon fodder without officers trained in the modern concepts of the war. As any of two men, a former homeowner of the Stalinists, Stalin and his lackeys had made quite the impressive Military Academy to train its new Red Army. Though it's fallen since in disrepair, we could easily reopen it and train a new generation of officers fit to lead our army to, ma to many glorious victories to come. Yes, please. Looking good here in 1967 still. Um, better engineers. That's nice. Oh, happy uh, June. As we are now out of tea. Darn it. Send the scientists to work. Innovate, innovate, innovate. Innovate or die. Any good businessman knows this. Those that stay stuck in the past, stick, sticking desperately to those that outdated, uh, will ultimately be driven to extinction by those who forge the future. Though many decry us as explorers of the common people, we can also appreciate the value of patronizing the sciences. We'll make sure that those with an education in the fields of science and engineering do not go unemployed and provide them with such funds that they need to make their dreams a reality. After all, their success is our profit, and if they happen to be working on something that can kill people, then surely their success is our victory. To serve a new master, 
Oh, oh let's throw over here anyways, looking at all this stuff. Better planes. Uh, Bob Falbos, confused why exactly Usuyani requested his presence. The violent struggle for power between Usuyan and Isuliani had affected the army too badly, but a few of his confidants, known loyal as Jawa, had all been found dead recently. The chauffeur opened the door, car door, giving way for a few stern looking guards to escort the general to Usuyan's study. Surprisingly, the mansion wasn't quite as lavishly decorated as he would have thought. In fact, the whole thing seemed very cold and utilitarian. The door opened, and then Papa Hassan himself, as he was known by his friends, took, shook his hand. Come in, General Bob Bob. There's so much to talk about, much business to be done, but first he. I would not mind it. The guard standing by his left side of the room uh, left the room for two cups of tea while the curve went straight to business. General, your previous uh, aid in the training of our forces has not gone unnoticed. Your aid has uh, been indispensable in ensuring the soldiers under our command can neutralize any threat to our rule, internal or others from who knows will claim the mantle of the Russian nation. Lots of cringe, knowing very well what exactly what neutralization meant. However, I know what you are close with the great Pakan of ours, Java Isliani. A man who has certain issues with it that I would like to resolve soon. Many of his closest associates have been well, uh, I'll be honest, were assassinated by on my orders. However, you, Pavel, are a lucky man. When I at last unset, unseat the Ge Georgian fool, I will make sure that your position stays intact. Any men like you, by my side of him, to have any chance of claiming all of Russia and beyond. What exactly are you offering me? Anything you want, Pasha. Money, power, women. I can arrange you to have a residence twice as opulent as mine. I'll pin countless medals upon your chest, and you can lead the charge for my vision of Russia. So brutally efficient that none of you, that none will ever be able to compare to it for him, George, uh, from from Germania to New York, what do you say? I cannot be corrupted so easily, Pakan. My wish is to serve Russia, not to enslave it. I must reject your offer, unfortunately. If it is your desire to help you kill Mr. Mr. Isiliani, that I may have been charged to arrange, and I have no wish to exploit the people of Russia any further than the current powers that have been forced me to do so. The guard came back with two cups of hot tea, but Bazdov had already left the room, and our friend's appointment is on his face. Things, something's going to be bought, no matter the price. Enough divisions for now. 10% growth ain't bad though. Oh, this is different. It actually changed the end of the Reichstadt, huh? Africa breathes? Yeah. I'm sure nothing bad will ever happen there, right? Alright, so. Um, training, expertise, research facilities, and academic base. Ooh, academic base. We want to wait. How many day? How many months would that be? That's more than four months. Screw it. If we get it done now. Academic base. Oh well, whatever. Uh, research facilities definitely. Agriculture, healthcare, admin efficiency, industrial expertise. Ooh, industrial equipment is not bad. Screw it. And we get the bonus of research. Whatever. Spend it now. Agriculture. Yeah. Whatever. Let's try for better. And so, in one fits of motion, one can. Bogdov moved his finger on the map, the newly minted general staring at him with undivided attention. <clears throat> uh, from Pechurin's sleazy, capital maniac eyes to Avramov's melancholic gaze. Uh, None of the officers even had a formal education. Some of them barely knew how to read. However, Bob thought they see a lot of potential in some, enough to make an, an as protégés after the general troop had reform. Troop, troop reform had begun. Karel Korobka it may have been a smuggler. However, there was anyone who understood the struggle of the supply question. Uh, it was him. Well, I'm running through th the theory. The man had the utmost understanding of where to utilize firepower and where to preserve the infrastructure, glistening with his gold teeth as he grinned slightly greedily. Avmarov. For his reputation as a constant escape, he had a good consideration for terrain, especially on the defense and the retreat, his home to from being the forests. Well, when we get the boys to the tree line, Avos will carry us through his uh, sire. He didn't pronounce any time a tactical situation discussion was brought up, seemingly not completely realizing that not everyone was as well as acclimated to the natural beers of the motherland. Petra, on the other hand, had a great deal of understanding for attack. The man's grabby hand tightening into fists excitedly every time tanks or artillery were brought up. Considering the man's reputation as a robber and a small arms enthusiast, it did make sense. There we are for today. The lecture's over. Reads, turn to your barracks. Botov's rolled the map closed, watching the X-Band salute, and begin to march out. <clears throat> there we are uh, for today. The lecture is over. Uh, yeah. We know something inside. Maybe calling them x bands was still a bit too early. Petrin, the thief, stopped at his name being called, turning on his heel, uh, clearly guilty. Return my wristwatch, and please keep this mania, mania of yours under control next time. Botov lectured exhaustedly. The watch clacked as it was placed on the desk, and the thief slipped out of the room nervously. Can beat a general into a thief, but not a thief out of a general.
Stunning strategy. The thieves in law are at their root in an organization of criminals. No criminal can even claim the mantle of thief unless he has served multiple pers prison stints. However much tradition may be important to us, we need to, to break from our roots in some ways that we wish to survive. The circle and the thieves' organization as a whole must not be led by uneducated thugs who only know how to use their fists. Though it's great that our subjects fear us, our enemies will not fear a nation led by illiterate criminals. Those thieves that can't even bother to learn how to read and write properly can even easily have their territory adjusted to have something more manageable for their feeble minds. Not sure if we really need ample stuff, but hey, you never know. Sure, why not? Minus point three is not bad. Not shabby at all. With point two three, over ten percent growth, not enough, and the debt is going up, but whatever. Put them on just to work. Now oh, look at this. Yes. Look at this. More stability. Increases our GDP by five percent by over half a billion. Port heavy machinery. Um, where are we at for that one? Oh, they're going to go to war with everyone else, which is fine with us. Honestly, is it worth doing it now? Honestly, probably not, but whatever. Just doing well, I don't care. Absolutely beautiful. Theorize new industrial methods. Many centuries ago, a man in China named Sun Tzu wrote a book known as The Art of War. It required reading in many military academies around the world, and most recently was added to the curriculum of our own military schools. War, however, is not only an art, it's a science. Like any science, war can be perfected, it can be methodical, we can learn from what doesn't work and explore, explore further what does. Every aspect of a war machine must be experimented on and brought down to a science who said that these were stupid men. Probably really good. Minus, my god, that's so much. Alright, so they're slowly going through everybody, but they're still beat up Gainey, which is kind of weird. Hey, 82% stability's not bad, though. Nice, they finally caught up. These guys are friendly now, finally, thank God. And happy August, everybody. Adapting to survival. Or adapting. Though we might march on to the future and arm ourselves with the newest war machines, it'll be all for nothing if we forget our origins. We're once mere bandits, and those that few that survived the terrible years under Blokin's whip and the icy heck that was Vorkuta. We were all once prisoners, all thieves but are by definition, or else he was not a real thief. <clears throat> we fought and earned every scrap of food, every cloak pack. Every day we were still alive in that terrible place. Uh, we fought for the right to survive and for the right to rule. Now that we are the masters of this, of this land, we must not grow complacent now. We must adapt constantly to the threats around us, or we will die. Contracts with Cosa Nostra, Caudillo. Um, that's what we want. Oh, do something of us up here, maybe? That's what I thought. Huh? August Revolution. And in the global theater next. The Thief Territory is no longer just a warlord state. We're not mere bandits. The Thief Territory is a nation, and that is an indisputable fact. We have clearly defined borders, an army, and a stable government under the wise leadership of the Great Pecan. Isliani has insisted that with our ambitions stretching across the Russian state, we must reach out to the world, especially the democracies of the OFN. By promising some nominal reforms, we could gain access to investments from the powerful American economy and advisors from the government and armed forces to aid our modernization. Ussian, however, has a different opinion. The spider holds that we shouldn't put all our eggs in the one basket and instead catch as many new friends that we can catch in his web. After all, more investments means more profit, does it not? Nice. Nice. So, Ussian wants neutral as a Swiss, maybe. The Great Pecan's friends in America. So, you're going to be about these, please go to. I kind of want to go this way because I prefer America, probably. So. That'd be pretty good too. About the CIA to our worm, that'd be nice. A profitable partnership. So instead, we're gonna go this way. Neutral as a Swiss. If we could join the OFN, we could cause a thermonuclear war, which sounds like fun. What are we at for this? Minus point four five. Holy crap, that's insane. Might be a bit broken, but you know what? I'm not gonna complain. Definitely not about that. Oh. <clears throat> Disband the militias. The first step in our modernization campaign must be the formal abolishment and disbanding of the many militias that we've recruited in our earlier campaigns against similar forces. They're barely a match, but now that our enemies are uh, uh, not just no longer mere warlords, the band is most professional and something resembling a real army. There can be no excuse for ill discipline, Apache equipment, uh, and non standard uniforms anymore. This is there any rest of contacts? 
Since 1400 hours yesterday, 17 of her contacts, both already embedded with the Jabal Ziliani's incompetent regime and in the process of being recruited, uh, were arrested in the Bolshevik as purge. Apparently, one of the Ziliani's inspectors discovered a correspondence with these contacts in the random mailroom bust, which was reported really quickly to the regime's secret police. Well, we've been talking to our guys through the mail, really? Well, it could have been worse. They could have been gotten the actually effective ones. I recommend, recommend switching how we correspond with contacts as well as ensuring their loyalty. Silly mistakes like this will keep us out of their power forever if not killed. Sign your loyal secretary and countryman, Leonid Orozhov. Cover our tracks, we need damage control. Oh, look at this. Developmental subsidies. Give it one more month before we click on that one. Now we can definitely wait. 14%. My god. That's so good. Inflation is barely existent. That's so good. Oh my goodness. There we go. Give it another month. Ooh. Sure, why not? Look at all that we get. Even more GDP? Yes, please. Hey, better industrial equipment. Who could have seen that one coming? Excellent. Spruit, scout helis, attack helis, eh. Got that one coming along, which is nice. Let's go with attack helicopters. Eh, we'll see. Maybe we can actually use them, maybe not. Valku and Laos. Uh, the national conscription reform. Hmm. It's not bad. You lose population, though. Give more daily pickle power. Or expand territorial recruitment. Forty thousand more manpower. Hmm. Anarchy. Any pecans that not comply will be punched severely. Broadened conscription. Honestly, I don't want to lower manpower. Our system of governance lately, or larger allows on a local pecans going over in your territory for us, so pecan within his borders. It is responsible for the thieves below and any associates that work with the mafia. Furthermore, it is his right to offer protection, pass laws, levy taxes, and conscript troops for the national army under this command. Though the system is prone to corruption, given we are criminals, it also works. So long as the local pecans keep paying their dues and taxes and troops of the great pecan, we uh, will not have to deal with any unfortunate shortages and recruitment campaigns when the time comes for war. To the great pecan. Or we can go this one. Hmm. The territory is a largely anarchic place. The law of the thieves gives local pecans virtually absolute power over their holdings, as we ask all we ask in return, loyalty and a lot of money. Unfortunately, some pecans are not are giving us neither. These disloyal fools are not only seriously threatening our financial and military situation, but as gangsters, they tend to get into very bloody turf wars with the forces of the other pecans, causing divisions within their forces and terrorizing local civilians that we put under our protection. Let's tolerate this no further. All military recruitment will be done at a national level, with every oblast required to give a certain number of contracts monthly. Any pecan that does not comply will be punched severely. Oh, this one's screw it, why not? I decided against my own self. Atmosphere? Nice. Advanced training methods. Germany, Japan, America. The three greatest superpowers of the world are divided in ideology, holdings, and objectives, and threaten the world with a nuclear assault of Damocles. Well, what do they have in common? Professional armies trained to fight and die to moments known for freedom, fear, or emperor. Our troops are not quite so fanatic, at least not in the ways we would want them to be, and, and they're certainly not disciplined or trained to fight like soldiers in any sense of that word. Per the great pecan's orders, regional re training camps will be set up on the, around the country in order to train new recruits, indoctrinating them with the necessary discipline, skills, and physical and mental fitness to fight like real warriors. Furthermore, our current troops will be constantly retrained and drilled to stay in top shape, and will send our officers for education from the best, mo best advisors money can buy on the tactics and strategies of modern warfare. Nice. The inner sphere, which is good. National conscription reform. And for this one. <sighs> ah, it's gonna do it anyways. Screw it. So, for the most part, I went right for everything we did. Wow, okay. Limited conscription with volunteer only would really hurt us badly more. Teach him shrewdness, division speed, teach him strength. Ooh. Toad artillery 500 things. From the Spetsnaz. That's definitely better to do. I don't remember the one I did last time. More attack would be nice. 
Because your shrewdness. What does it do to have the strength of a bear if you have the brain of a donkey? We don't need an army of illiter untrained rabble. We expect to have any stake in claiming it all of Russia. Thankfully, not all hope is lost. The thieves have plenty of experience in unconventional forms of warfare. All soldiers, NCOs, and the line officers will receive appropriate funding or training under guerrilla warfare, ambushes, night attacks, and reconnaissance. Creative solutions and initiative we encourage, as opposed to the strictly hierarchical command structure of the old Union that crumpled against the Nazi advance, our enemies will never know what hit them. Oh, happy December, everybody. Happy December. Pretty good. There goes Australia testing some nuclear bomberinos. So we have how many? 25 divisions? It's not bad, but it's not good. They're only friendly, huh? For the specimens. In war, some missions are just too dangerous for the average soldier to handle, no matter how well trained or experienced he is in battle. For tests like espionage, sabotage, and raids beyond the enemy lines, our army needs a new class of warrior. Recruited from among the best soldiers we have in ranks and the best mercenaries money can buy, these elite soldiers. We formed a new unit, the Voskaya Special Novo Naznashnia, or Spetsnaz for short. Threatened to fight anywhere, anytime, in any way, the Spetsnaz will pay our path to victory in the blood of our enemies. Yeah, that's just the final structure is okay, but and we need that too, but whatever. Ready for war. The army of the thieves has come a long way. Uh, from the band of clique formed from common criminals and hastily conscripted peasants. Gone are the days we hid in fear of blokin slugs who cowered at the thought of facing the fanatics of Marshal Yazov. They're all dead, but we have risen from their ashes and feasted upon their demise. Whoever looks upon our steely ranks now will have no doubt it'll be us to reclaim. The Mount of Russia, and bringing honor and glory to the motherland, where whose soldiers once marched from Paris to Alaska. Since we're here, let's go to here and get some actual better artillery. I forgot about that. Minus point for once, fifty-six percent is just not bad at all. That's so good. Six, not bad. Fourteen point five six, and we're already maxed out. We're already maxed out here too, which is awesome. We're ready for war, actually, since we're here. Ah, we got time. See in the skies. Though having a strong land force is key to any military engagement, modern warfare also requires supremacy in the skies. But we do not currently possess an air force. There's not one much worth writing home about. Largely, consisting of great patriotic war air propeller planes and the Soviet IL-2 bombers, these museum pieces have little use in today's battlefields. Recent developments in jet engines have proven fruitful. It's time we trade our Messerschmitt's fodder for new pilots and new planes worthy of the, the supersonic age. The skies will be ours for the taking. Happy February, everybody. You, me, and every new month. Mm -hmm. We don't have them yet. So we're gonna wait. I actually might get some anti-air. Just because super heavy tanks, too, huh? Uh, when we fight the Germans, we're gonna need some super heavy anti-air. 5,000 honestly not bad. We're gonna lower by at least one. Ready for war. Let's do it in the skies. Ooh, what do we have over here now? Is there anything up here yet? Integrate. The growth seems much slower. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. Nice. Actually, do we have enough here? Yes. Now we have finally added them to the sphere, but we'll see how much we can actually integrate them. Uh, neutrals are Swiss. Uh, the Russian bears always have been the subject to international intrigue. Some love us, some fear us. And many have tried to conquer us, some successfully. Now that Russia has awoken from her sleep, the Americans and Japanese alike will try to woo us with promises of freedom and profits. And the Germans announce us as Slavic dogs will be soon be conquered in totality once and for all. They'll all be disappointed. Their aim is to make us their puppet. If, on the other hand, they wish to approach us with honest intentions of trading business, then who are we to reject them? Context with the Casa Nostra. Hey, better military professionalism. Great. La Castra Nostra. <clears throat> Our thing in English is based in Sicily. Oh, political interference, huh? My bad. Um, is one of the oldest and most powerful organized crime organizations in the world. Spreading with the Italian diaspora from Sicily to Chicago. Names like Al Capone and Lucky Luciano come to mind in the eyes of many Americanazi. Americanzi, when they think of the Mafia, what do we think of them? Natural business partner. Surely it takes a criminal to know a criminal, and though the Cosa Nostra accepts only Italians in the family, they have yet to shy away from a good deal. Let's make them an offer they can't refuse. Hey, they accept immigration. You want to about this? Please go ahead. Awesome. Gain squad in Magnitogorsk. Add your old guard training. Nice. Beautiful, my friends. 
We actually get more divisions, which is actually really good because we're going to need them very soon too. Um, there you go. Uh, if we have to, we can see over here first. Beautiful. Uh, not as much. 12% growth is good. 0.41 billion is not bad. Anything else around here? I should go ahead. Nope. I love that we did get him, though. The neutral option. Is Ileana going to unfold the map of Europe on his desk? Good maps were hard to find these days, and this was the only few that could get to him that wasn't 30 years out of date. And rather unfortunate state of it was lying much under the Nazi jackboot, which made things pretty hard for Javo. The thieves demanded money and power for his loyalty, but with a swastika flying from Amsterdam to Moscow, there wasn't exactly a lot of options he had left, of course. Earlier to consider, uh, open relations with the United States. CIA agents, CIA agents had already involved themselves in the training of his troops, no doubt in exchange for the hefty amounts of money and other less legal things that only the thieves and law could provide. Only one problem, though. The Americans were an ocean away, and other than the frozen Kara and the Saplav Laptev seas, the thief territory was landlocked. That left him with one option. The neutral nations of Europe. The German sphere might have been out of his hands, but there was still money to be found on the continent. Brittany was not a seat, not unlike his own, and for the right price, they'll trade with anybody. Pulling out a marker, he circled the country before moving south. Switzerland was another good option, neutral and rich. Iberia and Italy were perhaps even more lucrative. With empires of their own and mutual hate for the Germans, a lucrative relationship could be made, both with the governments and the Italian sphere, or Italian and Ma Iberian mafias. The uh, great pecan smile, there's hope for Europe yet. Gold never tarnishes. Oh, look at that. I'm meeting in Madrid. The Iberian Union is a chimera born from the chaos of the Second World War, mostly aligned with the victorious Italy Italians before the war. The twin Caldeos suffered greatly from the Atlantropa disaster. Which doesn't exist anymore, does it? Uh, though both our nations may suffer from poverty and instability, we also have much to gain from a mutual cooperation. A mutual hatred of the Germans, a mutual love of capitalism, and most importantly, a mutual respect for strong leadership. General Franco seemed quite approachable to offers from the Great Pecan. Perhaps a meeting with the Caduio himself in Madrid might uh, prove a fruitful venture. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Grano resigns. Islam is stable as a government. This morning, Jabba Isliani, government, held several meetings where Pakans not aligned with us were shown the stability of the government and how Isliani was a good leader and whatnot. The meetings also either dissuaded or dissuaded them from working with us. Due to their apparent uh, success at these meetings, several Pakans and officials have either left our circle or cut off recruitment contact. It appears Isliani figured out how to stabilize the government, or at least convince people that the government is stable. This tactic's already lost uh, us some good men, and we need to step up our efforts if we want to have any hope of victory. Uh, sign your loyal secretary and countryman, Leonid Rozhov. Prepare as many propaganda posters as possible. We need to recover our lost base. Which I'm not super concerned about. The Godfather. I do not see how your organization can even benefit us. Giuseppe left out a puff of smoke and stretched lazily. Isliani could understand the lack of sense of urgency in the mafioso's movements. In the end, the Great Pecan had been effectively defamed in a no Cosa Nostra territory. No weapons, no sources, just him. They even took away the Imperial coin and kept for good luck. Well, Mr. <clears throat> padre Giuseppe leaned forward. You will call me Padre. Well, the Great Pecan's left uh, reflectively thinned out, but he also had no choice. If he wanted to speak to the leader of the Sicilian Mafia, Giuseppe Genco Russo, he had to do it as a weaker associate rather than a greater power. Padre Giuseppe, I believe my nation has many benefits for your business. God, is Ilani hated being sober. He never felt anxious, but the acute feeling that every word was being judged as life or death did not leave him. The ma ma matter did not leave him. After all, behind me is the whole country. Huge markets, privileges with my security services. So much untouched land that you can hide your long longer-term merchandise. And what do you want then? Giuseppe interrupted his expression unreadable. Well, Ms. Liliana grinned confidently. Arms, support, ease, trade, and diplomacy with your group, as well as information on Italy's dearest uh, for the interests and movements. Giuseppe's expression did not change, instead of stayed static as a mafiosi considered. Fine, this does interest me. Suddenly, the Padre's w tone warmed. A drink to the new partnership? Oh, the Grip Con chuckled. Sure, as always, want to try Prosecco. Prosecco. Birds of a feather. Better Jeff Fighter's nice. Towards the tip of France. <coughs> the French have a little interest in paying heed to Germany's commands, especially after the Franco Burgundy War resulted in them losing territory to the Reich's nuclear enthusiast problem child. What they do have an interest is in Noah's profit. French weapons are some of the highest quality in the world, shipped in massive war zones around the world. France's black market has even infiltrated centrals into our own country, though we've tried to crack down on them in the past due to their negative influences. But perhaps we could strike a deal on the more equal terms. If the frog can get safe passage into Russia, they will reward us handsomely. There you go. 
What are we at? 34. That's going to take quite a while. And we've got a lot of territory to cover. The Caudillo. Franco looked much more imposing than the propaganda photos, though, thought Isiliani. The old man rest in front of him, cane in hand, didn't seem like an imposing figure. However, even though he didn't know a word of Spanish, he heard enough of Caudillo's voice to know that he was not a man to be trifled with. The Spanish, for being such a laid-back people, sure loved their formalities. He had even been greeted by with fine food, a flamenco show, and uh, a drill demonstration from the Iberian army. When he last sat down with Caudillo to talk business, he was surprised that the two had a lot in common. Both men had come to power in time when think their nation was gripped in a weakness in civil war. A sentiment that resonated in Franco, and he was sure of, of, from his firm handshake that the rare, genuine smile he saw from the dictator. The deal was simple. Iberia would formally end its German-directed embargo on the free Russian territories and recognize the West Siberian thief territory as an independent state able to do business with Iberian corporations. Camera crews filmed and shutters flashed as the two dictators shook hands for all of Iberia to see. Two men that had risen from irrelevance to the very top. Perhaps a lesser man would have come back with nothing, but Java knew a fellow self-made man when he saw one, and there was a cunning of this world. Those that looked took risks and played hard, but that would win. On together, the Spanish bull could make the Russian bear roar once again. Arriba, Russia. Shitty dealings in Switzerland. Ah, uh, Swiss, what could we want with those cowardly, neutralist, peace-loving dudes? Record scratch, freeze frame. What do you mean they're armed, armed with the teeth and have more money than they know what to do with? Give me the Zurich now. The little Switzerland might not seem like it has much to offer birth. The Great Pecan has been recently informed by the more approachable allies of Vusuyan that the Swiss banking sector will trade with just about anybody, even the Russian states that they ostensibly embargo at Germany's behest. Perhaps some of our taxes for deployment could easily be transferred for safekeeping in Swiss banks or invested in Swiss businesses. The Swiss capitalists might also be interested in gaining access to our extensive natural resources, and their usually neutral government could certainly have an interest in gaining a future bulwark against pack dominance of Europe. We shouldn't delay any further. Let's get packing. Towards the tip of France. If North Russia had froze with time, or froze in him with time, with ice, Northern France pelted Vladim with slushing rain and howling wind, but unlike Northern Russia, he had nothing but a leather jacket to combat the elements, each of his limbs fe uh, feeling like it was cast from its now marble. Darn screwing, he swore on his breath as the salt spray hit Vadim in his face. Uh, Another barge lazily pulling into the port of St. Malo, the great waves parting underneath it, several exhausted French sailors trudging into port under the torrential rain. Though one seemed to be saved back, sitting on one of those crates with a dreary expression. Vadim felt a sudden empathy. Guard duty? The French soldier lifted his head. Hmm? Uh, Vadim pointed at the box of his guns his boss left him on guard duty with, and, then, and then his rifle. Guard duty. The French's face lit up with understanding. Ah, Sorantes. Yes, 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 yes Sorantes. Not Vadim nodded. Uh, the French shook off, fishing around his pocket, taking out a cigarette pack and offering it to the equally exhausted Russian. Cigaretten? Sure, Vadim took a cigarette, lighting the Frenchman's and then his, before turning it back towards the Yugo and Barge. Observing the creative of his guns with a bored expression, the French turned back to his, from one crook to another. Diplomacy by God. A gold, gold, gold. The Germans preferred diplomacy by the tip of the bayonet, subjecting the subhuman races of Europe and Asia, or uh, Africa, to countless tortures while claiming that the pact is for the good of all of Europe. The Japanese promised liberation to the Asian race while enslaving them for every last drop of profit. The Americans promised freedom and democracy, will seemingly go to very undemocratic measures to bring nations into the sphere, willing or otherwise. Though within the halls of power, the leaders there write us as nothing but greedy bandits, as we are at least honest about our intentions. We don't ask foreign nations for their servitude, nor for them to change their ways of life. We offer them goods, and we ask them nothing but payment in return. Perhaps what the world needs for peace is a healthy dose of capitalism, and we're more than happy to provide it, of course. Of course. Everything has a price. Pretty good. But since we're here, we have 82. We have a real infantry. These are 40 combat with big, thick boys. Air assault companies, we need attack helicopters and transport helicopters. We have early helicopters. Well, we're trying to get them. Um, yeah, it's going to take a while. A true tax haven. This is the only fell out, out of place at the table. His neatly pressed suit, incomparable to the lavishness of the international tycoons, let alone their diamond studded wives, all wearing the same painted on smiles. One of the presenters fumbled a paper, beginning to announce the next order for the evening. Well, and to our newly accepted guests of honor, while the Swiss Alps may never compare the Urals, I would like to welcome Mr. Jabaizo. Is, is, is. The great pecan gave a wry, irritated smile as he stood up, the champagne in his hand, the glass giving a wine under the pressure of his fingers. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to give a short toast before this evening moves forward. The whole room applauded politely, but the coldness behind their eyes could not betray this was the test. All of us here, we are self-built men. Men who were given a quarter and took none ourselves. During some... Some during the Great Depression, several of the several silver-haired monocles nodded. Some during the trying times of the Great Patriotic, I mean, Second World War. This time it was the turn of the men of Israel on his age of grumble and agreement. And then some even now. During the Rock's attempts to get a photo on both of our doorsteps. Therefore, we must celebrate this liberty, this great gift granted to us, so we're to be rewarded. Tonight, we'll take it easy, but we must also take it now. As Liliani raised his champagne glass, attacking raising theirs in unison. To free enterprise, ladies and gentlemen, and vest in helicopters. 
Supersonic fighters and bombers are certainly a great addition to our armed forces, but the modern age has brought with it a new kind of aircraft, the helicopter. Though much slower than fixed-wing aircraft, helicopters have many advantages. They can fly low to the ground, hover in place, are easier to operate, and most importantly, can give and take a lot of punishment. I would be keen to invest in not only transport helicopters, which can quickly transport supplies to the front and wound from wounded from danger, but attack helicopters as well. Capable of taking out both infantry and tanks alike with a variety of bombs, rockets, and machine guns, very little will be able to survive a barrage from our new toys. Cool. Diplomacy by gold. A great conspiracy, hey? You got a lot of political power. Tanks of our own. The last five decades of conflict, from the Great War to the Russian era, gave Shonen the necessity of superior armor in any serious conflict. Our connections. Uh, and other Russian states have sent us back blueprints and reports of new tank forces being developed and deployed by our potential adversaries in the fight to reunify Russia. Let's threat to the thieves cannot stand. We will ensure extensive financial rewards for military engineers to get modern tank designs into production and with a speed armor armament to turn whatever tanks the enemy throws at us into scrap metal. Do we have a gate? Nice. Where are we at now? Um, nothing here that really says you have to wait, so... Shove them all! I'm not even gonna read them. Just press the funny buttons. Nice. A mechanized army. Although armored tactics can punch deep into enemy lines and cause a great deal of chaos and destruction, recent armored exercises have shown that our tanks are still very vulnerable to enemy infantry. If unescorted by ground forces of our own, though getting our foot soldiers unmechanized will be a great logistical challenge, the fruits of our efforts will be a lot more than worth it. Rather than marching long distances, our men will certainly enjoy resting their legs in the back of a truck, and elite mechanized forces transported by APCs and IFVs will be more than capable of supporting our tankers in battle. Nice. There's so many more military factors, though. Down to two for now. Steam locomotives. Um, honestly, you know, I'll just keep it for now. Whatever. Propaganda, promises. Well, whatever. Nothing but the best. At last, our investments in research and procurement of new equipment has proven profitable indeed. The great conqueror is easy knowing that the thieves armies are the finds in Russia. One of the troops is easily worth ten of any pathetic conscript that army throws at us. A ride of the battle on cutting edge bat tank designs arrival, even the Le Leopard and Clark, easily cutting through the tin cans, arrivals can barely afford to keep running. The sky is green with our sound of our fighters cutting through the air, while helicopters bring death from above. While we might not have the biggest army around, we can say with pride that we have nothing but the best in the ranks. To victory and profit we march on. A stiff drink. Uh, it'll be a long time had been since Roman had been able to keep his bar open for than a few months, uh, for a few hours before some punks ruined his pub. Not that a geek could complain. He got enough business to cover his expenses with a little on the side to keep for himself, although he felt like he'd forgotten something. But uh, what? Say that crap again, a-hole. A disgruntled person or patron yelled to another. Roman reached for his revolver, though once he grabbed it, he remembered what he'd forgotten: bullets. He had only one bullet to use, and he had to make a count. He decided to put it back in the small crevice behind the counter. What the heck's crap did you just say? Another patron yelled in response before they threw the drink at the guy, though they missed and hit another person, or patron. Just another one of those nights. Roman shook his head as he wiped the counter. Then the situation escalated as all the patrons started to brawl. Looking up from the counter, the barman raised his voice. All of you sit down. Predictably, no one listened. Once more, he reached under the counter, grabbed the revolver, he cocked it, pointed to the crowd, and closed one eye while narrowing the other as he slowly focused on the first patron. Roman smiled as the patron sat back down, and thank God he didn't have to risk wavering around and unload a gun. Thank you. One last call for alcohol, though. But I think we'll end it there. I think we should be good, and at the beginning of the next episode, we should probably be ready to go to war with uh, the good old provisional commissariat of Western Russia. But if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a uh, leave a little like, subscribe if you're new, leave, uh, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I'll see you tomorrow, as we'll end up in a lot of war and hopefully not kill off a lot of Russians. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great grid power rest of your day.